So hepatitis B is a virus. Um, it's a type of virus that's called DNA virus. Uh, DNA is the, um, the genetic code that is in all our cells. And basically, this virus attacks our liver. It goes uh, inside our liver cells and causes inflammation. Now, hepatitis B virus is said to be endemic in Malaysia. Endemic means there is a background infection in the population uh, and we live with that, okay? We take precautions but we live with that virus in the background. So in Malaysia, hepatitis B is um, about 3 to 5% of Malaysians have this virus. So that is the endemic rate. Uh, as compared to other neighbouring countries like Thailand, for example, has about an 8% rate. Indonesia is also about 3 to 5%, whilst in Philippines, a little bit higher, up to about 15%. Hepatitis B is the most common cause of liver cancer in Malaysia. So it can cause damage to the liver so much so it can lead to liver cancer. So you can divide hepatitis B into two categories. So when you get the infection, that is um, when a person is exposed to the infection, that is called an acute infection, especially if you get it in, as an adult, then you can get some signs and symptoms like normal viral infection. You can get fever, loss of appetite, body ache, sometimes diarrhea. And in this instance, because it attacks our liver, some patients can be jaundiced. But in some instances, even if you're exposed, um, to this virus, you may not get any symptom. Some people have asymptomatic infection, so that can be the case. Now, what is the, the, the issue in, in Malaysia is most of the, the cases of infection happens during childhood, the first five years of life, okay? And therefore, the, the signs and symptoms are much less. Now, what we worry about is the chronic infection, meaning this virus has been in your liver for a long period of time and after a while, it can lead to liver inflammation and therefore goes on to liver fibrosis, meaning scarring of the liver. And the scarring of the liver gets so bad until it becomes all shrunken and shriveled and that is called cirrhosis and after which it can lead to liver cancer. So what the issue about hepatitis B, the, the problem is sometimes we don't know that we carry this virus. It can be a silent uh, virus in our body until that particular person gets damage to the liver and irreversible damage, so much so you can't do anything at the point that you find out. So that is the problem. So when you have chronic infection and you have damage to the liver, then you will have signs and symptoms of uh, liver damage, which is jaundice, your um, tummy can be swollen with water, your legs can be swollen, you can get confused because one of the uh, important thing our liver does is remove all the toxins in our body and sometimes they can have internal bleeding as well. So this is the problem. If you do not check for the virus, sometimes you do not know that you have the virus. Now, um, as I explained, there are two ways of getting this virus. The first one is what we call vertical transmission or perinatal. That means getting the virus in the first five years of our life. So majority is mother to child. Okay, so in that circumstance, a lot of people don't have any symptoms. And this is the biggest category of patients um, uh, now in Malaysia above their 40s who carry this virus. The second one is what's called horizontal, meaning adult to adult transmission. So how can you get adult to adult transmission? Meaning you are exposed to blood or blood products or sexual transmission. So when I say blood or blood products, so contaminated products that's used, it means 
someone else had, for example, you go for tattooing. So when tattooing is done and the needle is not thrown away and is shared with another person, uh, or uh, for example, uh, you go for, let's say, pedicure, manicure, you know, there's blood exposed. Then if it's shared to another person, it can, uh, it can be cross-contamination. So things like uh, sharing, uh, shaving blades, toothbrush, all these things are at risk. Things like sharing food, uh, that is not risk for transmission. Uh, I talked about sexual transmission, so sexual fluids is also another risk factor. So if you have a spouse, uh, you are hepatitis B, then the spouse has to be vaccinated for hepatitis B to reduce the transmission. But usually sexual transmission is if there is a sexual promiscuity that is the highest uh, category for risk. So like I explained a bit earlier, a lot of patients have this and they are asymptomatic, meaning they don't know they carry it. However, in about 20%, up to 20% of these patients who carry the virus can develop complications like liver cirrhosis. So when I say liver cirrhosis means the liver is all hardened and doesn't function as it should function. So the, the, the normal functions of a liver is to make protein, is to remove toxins, is to clear the, the bile in our body. So if we don't have all that, then the complications will be jaundice, swelling, water accumulation, uh, loss of weight and internal bleeding. Then of course, when your liver is so scarred and, and, and fibrosed, you can develop liver cancer and the complications of having a cancer is there. Now, let's look at the two types of transmission that I've said. So if it is a vertical transmission, meaning you get it at birth or in the first five years of life, then unfortunately, 95% of people develop chronic infection, meaning it is a bit more difficult to get rid of the virus in that setting. But we have effective treatment to control the virus. Therefore, though it remains in your body, if the virus is controlled so it doesn't replicate, it doesn't reproduce, then the complications of liver cirrhosis and liver cancer is reduced. So on the other hand, if you get it as an adult, meaning the horizontal transmission, then the good news is 95% of people clear off the virus. So they, they get rid of the virus, they develop antibodies, so they are good. Only 5% then carry the virus and become chronic. Again, the treatment uh, in, in hepatitis B is more of viral control, okay, with medications. So the current treatment uh, that is uh, mostly used are oral tablets, okay? And there are many oral tablets available and the two most commonly used oral tab tablets are entecavir, okay, and tenofovir. But there might be patients out there who have been exposed to um, telbivudin and uh, lemivudin, but these are uh, a little bit of an older drug. Sometimes, even in pregnancy, if a mother has hepatitis B and her virus is high, we do use some of this treatment, especially in the second and third trimester of the pregnancy, so that the mother doesn't transmit the virus to the baby. So, um, previously, we were also using injectable treatments, uh, which is called interferon or pegylated interferon. Um, but now with the oral therapy being very effective, we tend to select that more. So first and foremost, number one, we talk about the vertical or the, the getting the virus from a mother to child, okay? So how do you prevent that? So if a mother is pregnant and most um, uh, antenatal checkups, they will check for hepatitis B. So if the mother has hepatitis B, then we will make sure that if the mother has high viral load, then we give the mother tablets to reduce the virus. And as soon as the baby is born, we give the baby antibodies in addition to vaccination. All babies born in Malaysia 
whether or not the mother has hepatitis B is given uh, vaccination. Since 1989 in Malaysia, we have a vaccination program for hepatitis B. So all babies born should be vaccinated and the vaccination is three times, which is uh, at birth, the, the day of birth, one month later and six months. Okay, so they must get these three doses. Now, what about prevention on, you know, getting it from adult to adult? Okay, so then, of course, like I said, don't share your, your shaving blades, don't share your toothbrush because all these are potentially exposed to blood. So you do not want to get someone's exposed tool and have potential of hepatitis B. So in the same way, if you are going for a facial or manicure or tattoo, make sure that they use clean needles. They are opening the packet right in front of you. The tools that are being used by the people is nicely sterilized. Sometimes we don't know we are carrying the virus, so it would be good that you go for medical checkups and make sure that you check for hepatitis B.